Maria Elia has globetrotted her way around Europe, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, and Australia. Always looking for new, exciting recipe ideas, she's well known in Britain for using global flavors in her cooking. She now works as the executive chef at Joe's in South Kensington, where she's received rave reviews for her eclectic and experimental dishes. As Maria has the night off work, she and her housemate Alison are treating themselves to some comfort food in the form of a delicious meatloaf with tomato sauce, served with sage-infused mashed potato, followed by orange blossom and spiced chocolate ganache. So I'm going to make something really comforting for this meal. I'm going to make posh meatloaf. So for meatloaf, it's full of lovely prosciutto, which I've laid out for the length of my tin. Just measure your tin. Check the, the length, layers of prosciutto, lay some mint leaves on the top. So this is ultra posh because I've gone to town and I've got um, prosciutto, I've got veal mince, I've got beef mince, pork mince, chorizo and pancetta. And most people just make a meatloaf with one type of mince, but if you're going to make meatloaf, you need to make posh meatloaf and go to town. So lay my mint on there, take some chorizo, and just put about four or five slices there. Okay, so that's the base. In here, I've got veal, pork and beef mince. Give that a good mixing. And then to that, I'm gonna add some smoked applewood cheddar. This is like so good. It's like oozing with flavor. Parmesan. I said it was gonna be posh. <laughs> okay, mix all that in. I'm gonna add some garlic and onions, thyme and parsley. So I went to Australia, I was sitting in a hotel room, a little bit jet lagged, morning, TV on, and I saw, I only saw part of this recipe and they were making meatloaf and I was like, what oh, meatloaf? I've never eaten meatloaf in my life before. Anyway, when they started using prosciutto and chorizo and the like smoked cheese, I was like, oh my gosh, this isn't just any old meatloaf, this is like, this really captured my imagination. So I was running around trying to get a pen. Anyway, I wrote what I could remember down. And then I kind of forgot about it. I was on holiday, you know. Went to eat in really nice places, came back all inspired, and I'd completely forgotten about the meatloaf. And then a few months ago, I was writing my new cookbook, Full of Flavour. And I got to meat section. And then I got to veal and pork and everything. Oh, I know, meatloaf. And so the recipe got pulled out and had a little play around and here it is, the posh meatloaf. So I mix all that together. So I've got my pork, veal and beef mince. I've got thyme, parsley, onions, garlic, smoked cheddar, parmesan and some breadcrumbs in here. And I make a little well in the centre. Leave that there. My ultimate comfort food, guilty pleasure, sweet chilli sauce. A little bit of mustard. Okay, we're going to mix all these together, then we're going to add it to the pork mince. That's why I'm not going to bother washing my hand. Leave it all on there. I'm only going to get my hand back in there. Two eggs. Right, secret ingredient is brown sauce, which I can't stand. But in cooking, it's okay. But I actually, I can't stand this stuff. And this is gorgeous. And I want a pinch of dried mint. I've got my fresh mint, but I want dried. It does give a different flavor. And good old Worcester sauce. Give that a mixing. This just smells really rich. Okay, bring this over here. Pour this in the center. Get some salt. Squeeze it in. If you've got children, get them to do that bit because they'll just love it. Okay, so that's our meatloaf mix. Right, what we need to do is now pile it on the top. Okay. Looks a lot, but it's going to shrink. Okay, all the juices are going to come out. It's like making a cake, isn't it? Right. Okay, now what we need to do is get the paper, use the paper to help you roll it up. Okay. So roll, and then just roll it off of there, and roll it onto the cling film. Right, what I've got here is some cling film. 
I've got four layers. I've taken one layer, then just slightly overlapping, I've laid another layer, and then another layer, and then another layer. That way I've got a really solid piece of cling film. If you're making a tureen, that's also a method that you would use. And now what I'm going to do is take some pancetta and just lay that on the top. So we are truly full on meatloaf here. So I'm probably going to eat this with my flatmate. I do do most of the cooking for Alison. But Alison does, in all fairness, make a fabulous roast dinner. That is the meal that she cooks. And I am, after all, the chef. But I don't mind. It's really, you know, not many people cook for me as a chef. Everyone's too scared to cook for you. You know, but this is easy. Anyone can make the same. If someone asked me around for dinner and made this, served this up, I would be, like, so made up that they'd taken the effort to make it. Roll it up, then take both ends, and then just roll away from you. So what you're doing is you're rolling opposite ends, OK? And what you want to do is just twist. I haven't quite made them long enough to tie them, but just fold them under, OK? It's nice and compact, like a little meat joint, isn't it? Take your tin and just slide it in your tin. I know you're probably thinking, oh, my God, you're going to cook in cling film, but don't despair. We're not going to cook directly in cling film. You take a tin, place some meatloaf within the tin in another one, and we're going to fill this tin with boiling water. So it's a really gentle cooking method. And the cling film, it won't melt. OK, and then you need to place it in a preheated oven at 180 degrees. Right, in she goes. OK. So by cooking it in a bain marie, it's going to cook really gently and the cling film's not in danger of direct heat and melting. So you're going to leave that for about one and a half to two hours until a skewer inserted comes out, the juices will come out clear. And then I'm going to make a lovely sage-infused mash to complement the meatloaf. And then for dessert, I'm going to make a spiced orange blossom chocolate ganache. It's going to be gorgeous.